National Chairman, Yosha Ali, goes out in response to the call for his resignation. It's called those who are asking him to step aside as children, and he says he got into office by constitutional means. And the dust, dust is not yet settled over the nominations made by President Buhari for INEC resident electoral commissioners. In fact, a lawyer is insisting on going to court over the matter. Hello everyone, welcome back to, it's good to be back on the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye. Let's get started everyone, shall we? We continue with our countdown over the strike action by university lecturers, which the union has now declared an indefinite strike regime. But it's 200 days since the university teachers in the federal universities in the country began their strike action keeping students away from the classrooms. The start of between the federal government and the teachers continue, and the students are the ones who are now kept idle. Many Nigerians are looking forward to the stakeholders, the lecturers, the federal government, getting their acts together to resolve what has become a national embarrassment. Tonight, some very interesting issues for us to chew on. One is the fact that PDP national chairman has spoken up about the call for his resignation. I'll let you in on everything that he said in an interview. Then we'll chew on it. Another part of the conversation tonight that will interest you, and you need to understand uh, the implication of President Buhari's nomination of resident electoral commissioners on the next general elections. The legal, the political implications, some people have raised uh, issues about the, the matter. What does it mean for elections? And what are the issues that have been raised by these people? The civil society organization and a lawyer was insisted that he's going to sue President Buhari and the Senate over this matter. So me, everyone. But first and foremost, let me serve you with some of your political roundup stories. The Labour Party has affirmed Badebo Rhodes Vaivoy as the rightful governorship candidate of the party in Lagos State ahead of the 2023 elections. The party's National Publicity Secretary Arabambi Abayomi stated this during a press briefing in Lagos, where he also announced Kayode Salako as Lagos State's chairman and Sam Mokbala as the secretary of the party. At the event, Mr. Rhodes Vaivoy says the dust is now settled for him to begin his campaign. We need to create a Lagos for now, because the Lagos that we have now is not working. The Lagos that we have now has betrayed the people of Lagos, has not improved their lives. Ahead of the 2023 presidential election, the Kogi State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress is reiterating its commitment to deliver the states to the presidential candidate of the party, Senator Bola Tinubu. The state coordinator of GYB Networks, Rasiwaju, Komid Hadi Ameto, stated this in local Jada State Capital, while inaugurating the zonal federal constituency and local government coordinators at the state party secretariat. River State Governor Nisam Wike says voting during the 2023 general elections in River state will be determined by the conviction that the state will be better placed to benefit from the government at the center. He says despite the ongoing campaign of calumny, especially on social media, he will not be cowed into doing the bidding of a few selfish politicians. Governor Wike spoke at a flag off of the construction of internal road network in a Guta community in a local government area performed by the governor of Abia State, Okizie Bazu. Nigeria has a serious problem and you are linked to CIA, you know them, you're a former terrorist. Why not use that contact? And some Nigerians uh, problem. You want to use it to tell me who are you? The deputy governor of Kaduna State, Dr. Hadi Zabalarabi, is stressing the importance of making huge investments in the training of young people in leadership and governance roles in order for the country to have the right leaders and positions. The deputy governor who made the suggestion during the unveiling of the fifth cohort of the Kashim Ibrahim Fellowship, a leadership and mentorship program initiated by the Kaduna State government, notes that investing in youths is strategic to producing quality leaders. These are young persons who have been appointed to important responsibilities as part of our duty to create platforms and opportunities for the next generation.
Thank you very much, everyone. Let's get started, shall we? The nominations by President Muhammad Buhari into the Independent Electoral National Electoral Commission, INEC, has generated controversies, and the president has been heavily criticized for his choices. On the 26th of July this year, he forwarded the names of 19 INEC REC nominees to the Senate for confirmation. Five of the nominees were reappointed for a second term of five years, while 14 others had new appointments. Some civil society organizations have gone to town to raise issues on the appointments. In fact, a former vice president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Mande Ubani, has threatened to drag President Buhari and the Senate to court if they do not withdraw and reject the nominations of the REC nominees deemed to be APC members. The CSOs are of the opinion that appointments into the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, have grave implications for the credibility, independence, and capacity of the Commission to deliver uh, credible, transparent, inclusive, and conclusive elections. Now, let, let me show you some of the names of those uh, that the President submitted to INEC in July uh, across the different states of the Federation, uh, about uh, 16 of them, uh, four or so, uh, getting reappointment. And um, these are some of the issues that have been raised. I'll, I'll show you some of those names in a short uh, while, in a, in a bit. But let's get some legal, political perspectives to this matter. I'm being joined by the national chairman of the Zenith Labour Party, who was a, also the, the chair, former chairman of the Labour Party, Chief Dan Owayo. He joins us live in Abuja City here. Thank you so much, Chief, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Sean. Welcome back from you. your holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you're, looking, you. you're looking refreshed. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, let's begin. Uh, first and foremost, it's clear what Section 156 of the Constitution said about appointments into these offices, people have raised issues. A lawyer is threatening to go to court. You are a lawyer, and you're an experienced uh, uh, political party administrator and a politician. What are your perspectives on this? Uh, it, it's not just Section 150, 156. 154, 155 uh, gives the president the unlimited powers to make nominations. And... Uh, in making such nominations, as in this case, the Constitution allows him to consult the Council of States. Uh, and I don't know why we would like, we always like to jump the gun. What do you mean by that? What I mean is, you see, the Constitution has given one man the powers to do an act. And he should do it in so so manner. Do your consultations as allowed by the Constitution. Ensure that the person is not a member of a political party. Ensure that within the past 10 years, he has not been uh, found guilty of gross misconduct in course of, uh, and so on and so forth. The next stage is to send it to the Senate. If you have anything against any of the appointees, take the facts to the Senate, as we did in the case of Loretta Onoche. I was one of those who spearheaded it. And I presented facts, even to the public, that this woman is not a fit and proper person to go into INEC. We showed evidence that she was in a member of APC, which she denied. And more audio and video presentations were made. And the Senate saw reason and did not approve her. So what I detest as members of the opposition and as members of the civil society is to sit down and lump things on people even persons that had done nothing, because, so, because we want to play opposition. The case we should of, play opposition responsibly. This, this case of Loretta Onoche yes. and this very one yes. that's raising dust, yes. is he any different? It's not in pari Matera. It's not the same. OK, why it's is not it? The same. I, it I, I refer to you, somebody spoke on television, at least on this channel, yes. about the lady. We were, we yes. were, we yes. were at the forefront of, uh, of this matter, yes. because it's of public yes. interest. Yes. What, what facts do you have? You just come to national television. You mean those we were talking about? Of course. It? You just come to national television, disparage a woman, say all sorts of things. Like, somebody like me, I know her. I know her. Very clean, responsible woman. Maybe somebody has told you this woman should not come. So you're talking about the... Nom okay, so let's look at some of the names so that we can get clarity. Uh, the, the fresh state nominations. State by state. Yeah, state by state. We have them. 
Um, so, uh, Pauline Onyeka uh, Ugochi from Imo. Ugochi? Uh, yeah, Ugochi from Imo State. Mohamed Lawa Bashir from Sokoto. Zango Abdul from Katsina. Uh, Queen Elizabeth Agu Eboi. Abu Agundo Teso from Benue. Uh, Yomere Orisemelebi, Delta. And Professor Yaya Ibrahim from Kaduna. These are the new nominees. There are about 16 or so of them, the four new ones. So um, if you look at it from Kano, Dr. Nura Ali uh, from Kano, from Enugu, Agu Uchena, Sylvia, Ahmed Gereki from FCT, Hudu Yunusa from Bochi, Rosa Uzo Chuku, uh, Chijoke, Anambra, and Mohamed Nura. These are some of the names. Uh, I know that the civil society organization raised issue on the nominee from Sokoto and Imo. And one of the, uh, the allegation is that they, these people have partisan interests. Well, I don't know anybody who doesn't have interests. Shemu, you have a political interest because you vote. Every Nigerian has political interest. But the constitution talked about a card carrying member of a political party. So you don't just wake up and say, there's nobody who doesn't vote. Bishops vote. Imams vote. They have political interest. They vote for people they believe that will protect their interest. So but they come to disparage people that are not members of a political party. Because we are using our privilege as, uh, in, as members of civil society or as opposition. We must have our facts currently. Uh, I gave you I gave you an example of Loretta Noche. I remember, I don't know whether it's this channel. I, 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 it was not, almost all the channels. I was asked to prove it. I showed it. She was a member of a party. So she wasn't a fit and proper person to occupy such an office. So let us not start the talk about Sugoto and Imo. And I'm telling you now that that woman is not a member of any political party. So this is what Section 156 of A, 1A of the Constitution states. And it says, is not, so in, uh, the Constitution was making reference to uh, Section 153, yes. uh, where it listed um, about uh, 15 or 12 um, uh, pos position, federal position, Code of Conduct Bureau, Council of State, Federal Character Commission, Federal Civil Service Commission, Federal Judicial Commission, INEC, National Defense Council, National Economic Council, National Judicial Council, National Population Commission, National Security Council, Na Nigeria Police Council, Police Service Commission, and Revenue Mobilization and Allocation and Fiscal Commission. These uh, agencies of government, they, the Constitution was making reference to. And I just read a quote from what the Constitution says in 156.1a. It says, is not qualified or that's a, no person shall be qualified for appointment as a member of any of these body for said if a is not qualified or if is disqualified member for election as a member of the house of representatives yes. provided that a member of any of these bodies shall not be required to belong to a political party yes. and in the case of the independent national electoral commission it shall not be a member of a political party yes now the constitution makes reference to being a member of the political yes. party but for you what, to be a member, you must be a card carrying member of a party. What, if the what makes you a membership is the card. You can't be a member. You can be a voter. There's a difference between a voter and a member of a party. You can be a voter, but you're not a member of any political party. But can party. you tell us that these people you're talking about are I'm not I'm talking of the members. one I know, the one that has generated a lot of controversy. We had somebody even queried who appointed, who nominated this woman. It is the president. If you're a lawyer, you have the right to go to court. But you should also know that this constitution, only one man can do that appointment after consulting the appropriate authority. But don't Nigerians have the right to challenge a decision of the president? Yeah, you can. They think that you it can. is morally no, no, incorrect. No, 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 you can't challenge it now. Let the Senate pass it. That's why we must put our facts together. Get to the Senate, because there'll be public hearing on them. But the, the danger in what people have said is if it goes to the Senate, and Senate passes such a person. No, if you have those facts, the implication on the if election. you have those facts, and the Senate does otherwise, then you can go to court to challenge it. But I don't know that under the law where you are going to come in. This thing is strict. That's why people are calling for amendment to the Constitution. There are provisions that are strict, that you can do nothing about it. Because the Constitution, the check for the president is the Senate. So if the, it has passed that Senate, you have to go and lick your wounds. There is nothing you can do. But let me advise those of us in civil society and opposition. We must be responsible in doing it. We have a right to complain. We have a right to go to court. 
but we must not come to public television to just destroy somebody as if you are a paid hireling. You don't do that. And people like us, we say, no, we have a record. Since 1999, we have been on this opposition without recourse. So, 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 you, so you, cannot, you cannot just take somebody, open your loud mouth, and just destroy a woman. No, because you're a lawyer, and I like to put this to you, there is a popular and general principles that are being uh, quoted that uh, justice should not only be seen to be uh, not only be done, but must be seen, seen to have been to be done. done. So now, in this sense, some of these people, and they say it, it will come with uh, uh, to uh, equity, must come uh, with clean hands. So now, the, the question that a lot of these guys are asking is that not only that you want to say that this person is not a card carry member, this person should not be seen as partisan people. How can a partisan person be seen to be conducting an election? and being an arbiter between political parties, when already it is a public knowledge that some of these people have political and partisan interest. That justice that must be seen to have been done mm -hmm. is justice of providing the facts to the Senate. The Senate wasn't, before people said they must pass her, they must pass her. When Senate was confronted with facts about Loretta Noche, Senate backed out. Don't think there are stupid people there. Should people be I mean, made to go through the rigor and stress of having to shout and threaten the system? That's why I said, the right that's why I said we are jumping done. the gun. Allow the process to take its course. So, the, the only place we have to fight now is the, if you go to court now, court will say, I bet they have not been approved. Go to the Senate. So let us follow the process. We don't just want to be hard. We want to be hard. We want to be seen to have made noise. No. Let us go to the Senate with the facts as we did for Loretta Noche. The Senate will see those facts because there will be a problem after seeing those facts, which will be for the public, which will be in the public glare, and still go ahead to approve her. So don't destroy her before she gets there because you have no facts. There is a difference, as I've told you, between a voter and the member of a political party or somebody who is politically inclined to a party. There are two different things. Because the grounds. Be of, sorry. Yeah. Because, you see, we are members of political parties. We don't make 10% or 5% of the voters. Put all the membership of the political parties together. Forget about these 20 million, 10 million we register. They don't exist. Put all of them together. They don't make 2% of the voters. And voters, people will go to vote, vote on their conscience. And they are not interested in belonging to a political party. So let, on, let us not mix that. We cannot, because of that, say we crucify somebody before it gets to be had, before the floor of the Senate. I mean, uh, the, the basis of this conversation is on the basis of law. Yes. Uh, law and facts. Law and the fact. And the fact that uh, part of the principles and the concept of natural justice is the fact that if you are going to be an arbiter in any matter, you I should agree. not. You should not. Yes, so the I question is that why should Nigerians be made to go through the kind of rigor some of the civil society organizations went through and individuals went through and the media was put through to fight what they think was not right? Why should they go through another round? This is the second time that this is happening. Why should the media, the civil society, and individuals be made to go through this same cycle? That's why we are talking about constitutional amendment. Only one man has been given the powers. I'm a lawyer. I don't leave the law and talk as if I'm talking from the carpenter's workshop. I'm talking law. Only one appointor, President Muhammad Buhari. It may be wrong. We have advocated for Nigerians to make nominations through other processes to appoint people going into INEC. We have been shouting on that for five years. This constitution has not been amended. The amendment is not only on restructuring, which have scared people away. There are other areas that the Constitution needs to be amended. This is one of the areas. Allow Nigerians to appoint. If you ask me, somebody like Mike Igini should not leave INEC. Mike Igini should not leave INEC. He's the finest among the electoral, uh, resident electoral commissioners, but he's out. So allow Nigerians to make these nominations. They will be talking, yes. We have done it. No Nigerian will do that. The president will act based on limited information he has. So if he has made that error in nominating somebody without reference to the issue is in question, then you go to the Senate. 
If you think that the Senate has erred in their conclusions, you can go to court, but I don't know where you will base it. So uh, the, the summation of some persons who say, look, um, there, there are plans by the ruling party to embed their own persons into INEC. We will not let them do that, Shewon. INEC we have now. You see, when I talk, they say you two defend INEC. It's because all of us have been involved. If Professor Mahmoud takes a step outside the agreement, we'll be the first to shout. There is something we have done in INEC that is very difficult. And when I'm talking, I'm not talking from the cattle field. I'm talking because we know all the things that are put, be put online. Let it bring anybody. Is he going to do it in the States? All of us will be there. Where would he do it? Is he going to be so legend? It's not possible. Beavers has given solutions to all these problems. And that's why you now see, you now see voters card being thrown out. Put in the dustbin, thrown everywhere. It's because the politicians, Xiangu, that mopped up all these cards due to the incident form we used when we were using card reader to vote. They have come to realize that the incident form will no longer be there. At that time, it was possible for you to give anybody a card. It gets to card reader, it didn't get him. They give him incident form, he'll go and vote. Those situations will not arise anymore. So let us not start. We know what we have put in INEC on this regular consultation we'll be having with INEC. Any day, INEC derails. The same mouth we have used to call pass is the same mouth we are going to use to call fail. Before I take you into, because whenever we get someone like you in the studio, we try to milk as much as we can uh, from you, from your wide-ranging experience. Um, before I uh, get off that matter, there are those who will argue that Loretta Onoche, in fact, was not disqualified based on this issue that you raised. But no, that because, was, that was your time. Just a moment. Just, but because there was a clash from the states in which, for example, Mrs. Mary Ab Abamuche Umbo, uh, who, was, uh, who, who was said to have uh, represented Delta State on the same board that she was, so, uh, was supposed to be appointed to. Are you saying that they didn't know that Abamuche was there before she was nominated? Take it that Senate did not approve her. They can give any reason. We succeeded. You know, you see, that's this thing like pride. I don't want to be seen to have lost. That was what happened. Didn't President Buhari and those around him not aware that there's somebody from Delta there? They knew. They wanted us as a second person. So, but the point is that the civil society and the opposition succeeded in that exercise. Say, we'll take it. I've been talking about that, like the white man produced a pencil. At the top of the pencil, we put an eraser. In case you made a mistake, you turn the pencil and clean it off. We are in for this election to have free, fair, and credible election. That's why I'm happy with what the president said yesterday when he met the governors, yesterday or two days ago, mm -hmm. that are not ready for any rigging. So he has given the signal, both to INEC and to all of us. Everybody should respect himself. Go there, cast your vote, and remain quiet. All right. So that, that takes me to my next question. Yes. And the, uh, the question, as a leader of a political party, whatever structure is on the ground right now, are you confident about that structure, that it will give us a credible election in 2023? Which structure are you talking about? From INEC. INEC is the only one that has the structure and the system to conduct election in this country. I can tell you, yes, based on what we have on ground. I'm not going to see tomorrow. I can tell you, yes. INEC under Mahmoud, with the political parties, and even with the civil society, at every stage, up to where we are today, I am comfortable. I am comfortable. And that's why I have told you about the mouth you used to call pass, the same mouth you used to call fail. I've also talked about the pencil and the eraser. As at what we have now, Mahmoud Yakubu and his commissioners will deliver uh, good results. Forget about what's happening in the States. We are going to discuss that in the next meeting coming up soon. He has to reject the States. Most of them are so much entangled with the governors. Most of them are so, so involved in a lot of things, and we have evidence to show some. There's even a system in INEC now that after spending, as a senior officer, after spending some years, you have to leave. You cannot even serve in the state in which you were born of or course. the state of your of, region. Of, of course. These are some of the systems of course, that of INEC just brought out uh, and took a lot, a lot of, of uh, the administrative... Of uh, but you know, do you know what came out? That INEC has started planning how to rig the election. Do you think that's the case? No, that's what is in the media. I laugh. For example, somebody was removed. He has been on that seat for 11 years. Good guy. 
intelligent guy. He, 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 it was the child of his brain that we even got beavers, the director of uh, ICT. But he has been there for 11 years. So he has to be moved. Is there an administrative, some, some uh, administrative secretary, issue. secretary in, in, in one of the states? I don't allow these things to bother me. I don't allow it to bother me. That was why after 10 years in a party, I said, look, it's enough. Somebody should come and take over. I step aside. It's not their father's. So you are, you, you, you're confident that the president has made a promise that there will be credible election. I have not, it I, will not rig. I it have, will not help anybody to rig election. If President, I, Buh if president Buhari wants to leave a legacy, having not done well in all his uh, mantras that brought him into office, he should give us credible, free, fair, transparent election so that we hold that one as he's going to be part of his testimonial. I have always talked about the testimonial that will be given to the president. If everything has failed, security has failed, the economy has been bastardized, everything failed, give us good process. We say it was President Muhammad Buhari that gave us this. Now, um, you, you headed the Labour Party, and I'm very sure that um, you're following, I mean, the fact that you are a Zenit Labour Party national chairman um, doesn't preclude you from being able to speak to some of the issues. Um, there is a rave in town about the candidate of uh, the Labour Party, the presidential candidate, Peter Obi, and uh, what is happening in the Labour Party, the structure and how the structure of Mr. Peter Obi uh, is going to organize itself within the existing structure that he met on the ground. Are you surprised? Because that is one of the structures that you left on the ground in the Labour Party. What exactly do you think is going on? Well, so I don't want to talk about uh, my brother presidential candidate, uh, Peter Obi. Because the thing where they're hungry, I'm the hungry me. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't want to talk about it. We are not yet campaigning. But on the issue you asked me, yes, I was in the Labour Party. And I've tried as much as possible to avoid, you know, I have left the place since 2014, having produced governors, House of Reps, Senate, and all those things. I left, became the chairman board of trustees before I finally left. You see, I know what you are referring to is what is in the media now as to campaign council, uh, party structure, and all that. Let me make this clear. Once a candidate has emerged in a political party without reference to the Labour Party, it behoves on the candidate to elect to have his own campaign council. It's a prerogative of standing alone. The candidate yes. has the right. Yes, the campaign council belongs to the candidate contesting election. Or he may want to match it with the structure of the party. But it has to be in consultation with the party. Of course, with the consultation of the party. But most times, they want to have a campaign council separately from the structure of the party. The party will do nothing about it. But what the man contesting the election will do is to draw his programs, consult with the leadership of the party, in this case, National Wing Committee, as per his programs, pass it to them, as per when they are going on campaigns, fund them. They run your campaign council. The campaign council belongs to the candidate. It doesn't belong to the party. So when you start fighting, you start reading things, say, well, OK, this may be due to lack of experience or, or, or trying to be mischievous. It's the man that is contesting relations. The campaign council is for the candidate, not for you as a party. I have produced candidates that contested. Miracle was a governor. I produced all of them. All of them. They had their campaign council. We didn't quarrel about it. All they did was chairman. This is uh, this, this is that, okay. When are you going on this, this, that? We go, we speak. We know well, what you're supposed to do. Does the party, uh, I mean, would the council need the approval of the party for a campaign council? No, what they would do. Or does a candidate need the approval of the party? No, no, no. In, in fact, the, if, the council, if the party doesn't make an input, the party should not break its head. But the party can suggest to the candidate running for election. The campaign council belongs to the candidate. It's not to the party. The party will have its own structure moving along with the council. Isn't it standing logic on its head? No, because no. you are you are you're under the candidate has the powers of the authority from the party is is a flag bearer of the party. Yes, he's on the platform of the party. Yes, everything he does is doing it in trust from his own political party. You see, once a, an aspirant has emerged as a candidate. His status now how his position now how statutory 
flavor. Before he was an aspirant. Now he has become a candidate. That aspirant name has started with flavor guiding it. The party cannot just remove it because it has closed. It is the candidate that is running for election. In fact, it has never worked when you might the council, campaign council with the party structure, especially when we have new people. They want to take over everything. And that is what the candidate should not allow to happen. The party must always be accommodated at all times. It must be given its dues. If there is a program, the program must get to them. Yeah. It must be funded. Where you have smaller parties that don't have the funds like PDP and APC. <laughs> so, so, so that's how it is. Let's close the conversation. And this is my final uh, question to you, uh, Chief Wanyawu. And my question is, do you think that the election of 2023 will be a total departure from what we have seen in the past? And perhaps if you look at a crystal ball, from the yearnings of Nigerians today, what do you think 2023 portends? Would it be a totally strange, a miracle out of the bag from what we have ever seen in Nigeria's history? Before I get to that point, what you are seeing today is an expression of bitterness from the people of Nigeria. Leaders must listen, especially when the people they are ruling are not happy. So they're just expressing it. On the other hand, what you are seeing today is a continuation of an anger which they tried to show during the NSAS, and they were cut short. So let nobody take credit. People are very angry. People are bitter. And we have said this thing, we have been on this thing, particularly myself in the past eight, 10 years. And that was why in the National Conference of 2014, I told the 402 members we have opportunity to rebuild this country. We must not wait any further. If we wait, our children will not be as patient as we are. It has come to the point that children are now confronting their parents. Daddy, you are 79, you are 80. I'm 27, 28. Daddy, you have been telling me this since I was born, and it has not yielded result. Daddy, allow us to do it all over the country. So it's a year of the youth. So, so, so not only youth. If you take the majority of those that are raised are over 80% now, before it was 71%, it's almost 80%. So they're going to show it. The anger is there. They have been cheated. Mm. They have been oppressed. They have been defrauded of what belongs to them. So there is no way the people of Nigeria will not react. Let nobody deceive himself. All right. Thank you so much, Chief Dan Onwayawu, the national chairman of the Zenith Labour Party. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank tonight. you for having me. I appreciate it. We take a break, everyone, and when we return, our attention will be on the People's Democratic Party, the comment made by the national chairman of the party, Senator Yosha Ayu, and the wide range and internal issues of the main opposition party. Stay with me. I guess for now, will be Honorable Tajiri Yusuf and Mr. Chef Michel. The dust is not yet settled over the internal wrangling in the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. The reports that one of the demands of the party in the matter is uh, that the PDP national chairman, Senator Yocha Ayu, should resign his position to allow for balancing and even distribution of the top positions across the zones or region since he's from the north and the presidential candidate of the party is also from the East region. Senator Ayu was quoted in a BBC interview saying, quote, I was voted as PDP chairman for a four-year tenure and I'm yet to complete a year. Atiku's victory doesn't affect the chairman's position. I won my election based on our party's constitution. He went further to say, I didn't, I did, I didn't commit any offense. I'm only reforming the party, so I'm not bothered. Uh, with all the noises. I know I'm doing my work and I did not steal any money, so I see no reason for all these talks. When we started the PDP journey, we did not see these children. They are children who do not know why we established this party. We will not allow one person to come and destroy our party. End of quote. <laughs> Many people have referenced the statement attributed to him in an interview where he was quoted to have said, uh, this was in October of last year. Quote, now, 
Party positions are not tied to the position of executive and legislative position. However, I'm a very democratic person and I will do everything to promote the interests and image of my party. If the party says, the PDP says, I should step down after our presidential candidate emerges and happens to be from the north, I will be very glad to do so because what we want to what we want is to take over the government and run the government in the interest of Nigerians. So I will sacrifice anything to ensure that my party wins, end of quote. That was in October of 2021. Let's get some perspective to this one. For those who are in the know, I'm being joined from Dallas in the United States, Honorable Tajuddin Yusuf, a member of the House of Representatives and a chieftain of the PDP. Thank you so much, Honorable, for joining us tonight. Uh, right here in the studio in Abuja, Otumba Shegun Shomumi. Uh, will I call him a factional governorship candidate of the PDP in Ogun State? Because I really don't understand what point that matter is in Ogun State. Thank you so much, Mr. Shomumi, for coming nice tonight. Yeah. I appreciate CJ, it. how are you? Yeah. Let I'm me, good, you? Yeah, great. Let me begin with you, uh, Honorable Tajuddin Yusuf. Are you one of those who think that Senator Yocha, are you should step aside? That's a question that is funny. Of a truth, <clears throat> uh, if you are if about uh, maybe if, if two or three months ago, I got in an interview where he said that the national chairman makes him put him on the table with the statement he made in October that he will resign if the chair might be president can come from the north. If he has come out now to say he doesn't feel like resigning. One, one thing about democracy is that they give you the opportunity of uh, reviewing yourself. So for the party to look at it and look at other positions or consideration that will assuage the zone where the chairman should have gone to if he had resigned. And let me go back to the coach you, coach that you said you got from the BBC. I don't know how far that is true, but I don't think he will call uh, some, those who are calling him to resign children. So, however, I know the PDP to be have a robust mechanism. Nobody even believe we'll get to a level that the party candidates, Atiku Abubakar, and the, some other group led by the government, we can sit down. So that shows that there is reapproachment and there is genuine effort to reconciliation. Because to me, PDP has the best chance to get power now, and we must not toy with it. So and that's the spirit which I, I mean, I think the national chairman spoke in October. If you listen to him very well, he was talking about how important uh, it was for the party to get it right at the center. So I, uh, I leave that decision at bar. The chairman resigned or resigned to the party structure, I mean, to the party leaders to look at dispassionately. And if you feel it's not just that way, it should be that, oh, we start that, we look at it. This is what we can do to assuage this other group because we must come together. And I'm sure we'll come together. I know the PDP. Uh, quickly, before I allow Mr. Shagun to show me to coming, um, I, I spoke on this program with the chairman of the Board of Trustees, who himself said he's even ready to leave the office, that he is bothered about the manner in which things are looking, the shape and the, posi the top positions in the party that looks too much tilted to a certain region of the country. It was someone like Chief Olabode George, who is also a member of the Board of Trustees, because it looks to me that the burden in deciding of this matter will perhaps fall on the laps of the Board of Trustees before the neck ratifies this kind of situation. So if these men in the Board of Trustees are saying the national chairman should step aside, uh, do you think so? Is it expedient, if this, rather? If, if these men are saying the chairman should step down, they must have their reason. What I'm saying is that, like the chairman did say, he was elected uh, for example, four years. So if this man sit down and feel that he should resign and he does not feel that he should resign, then he, he cannot force him by such a party structure, the, the different level of the party, board of trust, when they come to town, it becomes a minority. His opinion becomes a minority opinion. His opinion is not a minority opinion. Nobody can force him out. That is why I still believe it is to George O. The candidate of the party cannot afford to allow this distraction. We do not need it. And I think that that step they taking to sit down with this group a few, few days ago is a step in the right direction. I'm of the, of this opinion that this group will sit down again. I, if I have my way, the parties should talk less to the press. Because either it is true or not, the chairman will 
funny when you say something about children. So we must uh, talk less because the journey, the project ahead of us now cannot in any way be treated in levity. We, need, we cannot tell Nigerians that we failed this opportunity. Nigerians have waited this long, they've endured this long, and they see the PDP as the best alternative now. So for that reason, I believe that reason will prevail. I'm convinced that in few days' time, you hear the different story that PDP has sought, I mean, are able to sort all these things. I am very, I have that conviction. I was privileged to certain information and right. give me that conviction. Also, my show me, let me allow you to come into the conversation. What's your view? On what? On what I've just said. I mean, <laughs> are, you fair, are you saying that you've not been following the conversation? So, so <laughs> you know, when we talk, we don't speak on the surface, you and I, and we've been doing this for years, so I will not even bother speaking on the surface. The first thing I would like to say for the benefit of everybody, there's something called organizational elasticity. It's a concept that says there is a way an organization will risk its ability to bring all its processes, its actions, and all the structures within it together and if they're not careful, they will get to what we call a tipping point. And a tipping point will be that point where they can no longer come back from. And usually, when an organization comes to that type of tipping point, it has very severe consequences. In reflecting on that fairly academic concept, I've asked myself often, what exactly does the PDP intend to gain in all of this? Let's start from what you just read. With profound respect to our national chairman, that office he occupies does not guarantee him the sense of entitlement to call anybody in the party a child. The last I checked, people come into election possibilities and participation at 18. And most of the players are way past 50. Some of them are even near in 60s, is Bode George going to be called a child? Now, when you now go into the specific of should he resign, should he not resign, and what are those who are asking him to resign, what exactly is their grouse? I have been very busy looking at the details of implementation of the actions on both sides. I've been very busy looking at the legalese and the framework by which this can be achieved. And I have been very busy with what exactly is benefited on either side. For instance, shall the president, shall the, the, the chairman of the party, underneath the circumstance that the PDP has come, consider leaving the office, however they're able to figure out the detail, too big a sacrifice when we can clearly see there are southern tendencies who are up in arms. On the other side, I've asked myself, will the southern tendency really gain anything significant by the removal of a chairman at this time? Now, Sharon, the reason why I'm going through this laborious route is to say that when people have issues that are already in public domain, then come to the public domain and say they would rather it was not in the public domain. It's a bit too late. The reality of the matter is that in a couple of weeks' time, September, that about the ending, we're going to, according to the electoral guidelines and timetable, be in full-fledged campaign. And the rule of any combat, be it even ordinary football match or wrestling, is that you're going to be profiling what you're doing by way of preparation, and what your rivals are doing by way of preparation. For some curious reason, the Labour Party, who's now being driven by Peter Obi, is not talking a lot about housekeeping issues. The ruling party with the humongous number of governors, ministers, the presidents, and all of and what have you, and their candidate, they're not spending so much time on housekeeping issues. An opposition party, the PDP, is the one that seems to be bogged down by housekeeping issues. Now, what do I recommend for them? 
and for us all. I think we must ask ourselves genuinely, what is the value of 100% of zero? For if it becomes clear that standing obstinately on legalese and rules, forgetting that, Secondus didn't even finish his tenor. Some arrangement was brought in for convenience sake to produce the IU led ESCO. And if we're seeing that these matters are not going away, they've left Nigeria, they've run all the way to London, they've run back to Nigeria, the conversation is not going away. The rhetorics that should calm free nerves and try to tell people that, okay, let's consider this, you're hearing children. Show, if I address, you're my junior brother. If I addressed you in a conflict situation as children, it will offend you profoundly. So on behalf of the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria, my very, very respected and someone I consider very erudite, Yoshi Ayu, I apologize and take that back. In the course of interviews, words can come in that may not be intended. And I'm sure it doesn't mean that I've apologized and I pray that those others take that apology genuinely. And I want to advise him, you cannot be in the eye of the storm and be throwing infectious and rhetorics that will offend people. All right. There's no basis for that. You may have started the party in 1999. Do you know what some of us did in 1994 to get us to the democracy? Is the age of Methuselah got anything to do with the wisdom of Solomon? Shall people who have been playing roles one way or the other for the past 24, 25 years in this party never live in, not consider themselves also having the gravitas and the personalities to say that this is our position in a party? So that's my view let, on let, that. Yeah, thank you. Let me bring back Honorable Yusuf. Uh, and I like the fact that you, um, I think the Gray is actually doing a, a good job. Well, yeah, you're, you're doing the elderly, you're doing what an elder would do. I've in the always been the elder <laughs> in the room in this party. Uh, let me bring Honorable Yusuf in, into the conversation, uh, back into the conversation. There was something the former governor of Jigawa said writing this program, and was asking, why is this about personality? Uh, why is it about Wike? Why is this about Atiko? What is the rift about? Um, uh, and the, the bigger question uh, in the end is, what exactly is the issue here? Why can't Nigerians just concentrate on the issues that matter to their lives? Let me do let me before I go into that, let me explain something to you. I've been privileged to be in the House of Rep for some years now. The difference between PDP and other political parties is that let me use the APC as a party as an example. If you have contrary views, opinions, it is really possible that you express them publicly in other parties. There is this uh, coercion tendency. I'm sorry. But I've observed it. I will meet colleagues, one or one who will share opinion with me about what they feel about some national issues, but publicly will never express that. But the PDP allow you to ventilate your opinion. To me, the PDP remains the only political party, party in Nigeria where there is no uh, anything cow you. So that is why you see this tendency. We, are expre we express ourselves, we throw as it is, and we come back to resolve. So it is not about Wiki, Chiku, or whatever. It's about the next election. If you look at it, the, the, the party chairmanship going to South, from the speculation I got, I'm not, I don't have facts, is we go to Southwest if, it, if that happens. So it is not about going to one person in somewhere, whatever you. It is not going to South South. But the fact that there are people leading this agitation, that's where their name is involved. Article today, by the grace of God, is the presidential candidate of PDP, and, and we desire, we pray, the general president of Nigeria. So you cannot take him out of this issue because he has become the leader of the party now by virtue of that, res of that uh, uh, responsibility on his shoulder. So he involved. That's why I had to take, go to London to sit down with him. Like uh, my, godly, my brother Shegu said, we must watch what we say at this particular time. But I'm not in any way who the show. It's about Nigerians. Because today, I can hit my chest that 
we're far better than where we are now in 2015. So PDP government is far better than APC government. So whatever we must do to come together and understand that this opportunity, this opportunity must not slip up. We must do it. Uh, because I, I'm I, I, I like because also, yeah. I know, okay. I know, I'm confident I have a relationship with both sides. I know Achipa, I know Wiki so well. I know that these two gentlemen they have in them very, very deep conviction about Nigeria should go, and they want it to happen. Because so it one, is one way people... imagine, Honorable, that this matter started off with the outcome of the presidential primary. But to a lot of mm -hmm. people, it doesn't look like this is still about the presidential primary or the aftermath of it, is it? Or is there an issue that no, we do not know no. here? No, I don't think because uh, some of our elders are trying to come into it and paint a scenario after the primary. By information, my information at my disposal, it wasn't presidential. It was the vice president nomination that really aggravated this matter. It was the vice president nomination. Someone felt that he was approached and offered, and that in the course of not being given that uh, that post or not being nominated, he was not called. He was not called. In fact, the manner it was done was wrong, and that is why there is this journey to meet at the middle and say, okay, 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 okay. Here we understand that you feel this way. We are sorry. And this is why this happened. So, and I want to appeal to some of our elders who bring their pastor, I mean, issue into this matter. They are not, in, to me, they are not speaking for the presidential candidate. They are interested in being seen in the public as being bold or what have you. They now mismanage the situation. I want to appeal to our elders. We must win this election. They must stop some of these mm -hmm. rhetorics and the narratives. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Some people are already cutting, I mean, counting the chicks, the chicken before the eggs are hash. Some people are already looking at aftermath of the election. Where will I be? So by implication, what can I do now to stop somebody who I think that is coming into the mainstream of this campaign might limit my ability to get certain things? Hey, <laughs> well, like I, Shegu well, said, well, like Shegu, like Shegu know, said earlier, yeah. Shegu said, 100% of zero is what? It's nothing, yeah. Uh, basically, there's yeah. Something in, yeah, there's something in in in, 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 in social is what we call tests and tests and synthesis. If we do not marry and get to synthesis, we might be in trouble. But yes, I, 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 very I, sure. I think I, I, I heard uh, Governor Wicke talking about uh, some folks uh, uh, who are already jostling for the chief of staff to the president already. I mean, uh, these are some of the conversations that, uh, that are being raised in this matter. But let's anchor, and it's going to be on this note, it's going forward. Where does your party belong in the scheme of things? Does your party look serious in the eyes of Nigerians who are trying to make a choice? Because if your party is uh, talking about this internal wranglings, you have not even started talking about what solutions that you have for Nigerians. What do you make of the thought of Nigerians right now about the choice that is laid before them? Is your party really looking serious as a serious choice or alternative for Nigerians? So the problem is that there's something called the most predominant argument that people want to hear. Fact of the matter is that to some extent, the conversations around issues is also coming from the PDP. I mean, you will always have the presidential candidate, Atikwa Bubaka, speak on the economy, speak on education, speak on such things. But the thing is that this other conversation is drowning that. But you know what? You asked about the Nigerian. For the first time in the history of our country, we have a very fluid and very unpredictable situation on our hands. Typically in Nigeria, when we're going for elections, it's almost like it's a two-way two call we can almost call it, of course, we PD people will be excited and say, we'll win it, we'll win it. The other sides will say, they'll win it, they'll win it. But, but right, now, like it now again. right now, it's not looking that way. So it's not looking that way. It's looking so unpredictable. Nobody is even looking guaranteed. Yeah, yeah exactly. The point, the point, no, 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 I, I don't want to use the word not looking guaranteed. Nobody can afford to act as though they've won an election that has not been casted. You're going to look, so one, one party will have a Christian Muslim Muslim issue. Another party seems to be having a North South divide issue. Another party seems to be having candidates that are on the lower run of the ladder of candidates, you know, for election other than the presidential candidate. So, and you're seeing that there's momentum all around. So, you're going to be very, 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 very insistent. 
that look, gentlemen, everybody, do not assume that because the Nigerians don't usually turn up as much as they yeah. have been turning up in the past, do not assume they won't turn up. Because if, change. We, if we just get to the day of the vote, right. you're monkeying around and they turn up, and for whatever reason, they don't feel the message, no. then we have a problem on our hand. Thank you so much, Atumba Shegun Shomumi, for coming tonight. And Honorable Tajuddin Yusuf, thank you so much, gentlemen, for your thoughts on the issues relating to your party. Thank you, indeed. I appreciate sure. it. And I wish you the best of luck in your other neighbors. You. you know what I mean. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Honorable, it's good to see you. But that's our we draw the curtains tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Akimale. Bye-bye.